G'day and welcome back to the Project 200 video series. If you've seen my initial review of the 200, you'll know that I was less than impressed with the behaviour of the vehicle's automatic transmission. Today I'll be addressing a big part of that problem by installing a torque converter lockup kit produced by Richards Auto Electrical in South Australia. The big advantage of this kit over some of the others on the market is that it locks up automatically at a user selectable speed rather than only via a manual switch. Well, I am also installing a three-way switch so I get on, off or fully automatic operation. Please enjoy this step-by-step -step guide to installing the lockup kit into the 200. Afterwards, I'll be taking a test drive to compare the fuel consumption and performance with and without the lockup kit activated. With the lockup kit sitting in the passenger side footwell, run the red, black, white, brown and orange kit wires out through the firewall and into the engine bay. The easiest way to do this is by taping them to a rigid piece of wire, then pushing it out through the provided nipples in the factory grommet. Then with the ignition off and the key fob away from the vehicle, remove the upper ECU plug by lifting the grey lever and gently pulling out the connector. You can then remove the cable tie, plastic cover and protective tape to expose the wires on the back of the plug. Find the blue wire with the yellow stripe and directly below it the blue wire with the red stripe. Cut both these wires about 50 millimetres from the plug. You then need to connect the red kit wire to the loose blue yellow wire, the white kit wire to the loose blue red wire, the black kit wire to the plug blue yellow wire, and finally the brown kit wire to the plug blue red wire. Solder and individually tape the connections, then re-tape and reassemble the plug and reconnect it to the ECU. The orange kit wire should then be connected to battery power, which I'm doing via my previously installed accessory fuse box. Moving inside the vehicle, you now need to access the rear of the radio. Begin by removing the padded covers from either side of the lower section of the centre of the dash. They're held in place by small plastic clips and can be carefully removed by hand, beginning from the rear of the vehicle and working your way around each cover. Next, remove the silver Phillips head screw at the top and unclip the plastic retainer at the bottom of each side cover. The side covers are then removed by pulling them towards the rear of the vehicle and slightly outwards. You'll also have to unclip the wiring loom from the side that has the start button and four wheel drive selection switches. Next, carefully lever off the top cover plate using a small flat screwdriver or special tool. Again, it's retained only by plastic clips. You also need to disconnect the wire to the light sensor. You can protect the dash from any chance of damage by attaching a strip of electrical tape on the lever point. The next step is to remove both air vents by carefully levering out the bottom of the vent, then pulling the entire vent assembly outwards. Then disconnect the temperature control wires from each vent. Again, you can protect the dash with a strip of tape. The next module to be removed is the fascia that starts just below the hazard light switch and goes up to the top of the dash. Start at the bottom and pull each pair of clips out carefully, then disconnect the wires for the hazard switch at the bottom and the clock at the top. Next, pull out the lower segment containing the ashtray and power outlets. Finally, remove the four screws retaining the radio unit and pull it out of the dash. Find the pink wire with the white stripe, which should be bundled at the rear of the radio. Run this wire down through the dash into the passenger footwell and connect it to the purple kit wire. Because I'm also running a manual override switch, there are some changes from the supplied instructions. First, I took power from the green wire behind the dash power outlet and connected it to the power in terminal on my switch. I then connected one of the switch power out terminals to the green wire in the lockup kit. This gives automatic operation. I then ran another wire from the switch's second power out terminal, tapping into the green kit wire between the relay block and the control box. This connection allows me to override the speed controller and lock the torque converter at any speed via the dash switch. With the wiring connections made, attach the kit's resistor and earth wire to the metal dash bracket with the supplied tech screw ensuring the resistor is away from the carpet and any plastic parts. The lockup kit comes preset to lock at 78 km an hour and unlock at 74 km an hour with standard tyres. If you're happy with those settings then you can skip this section. 
But because I'm using larger tyres and I want the lock-up to occur at slightly lower speed, I need to adjust the settings. To do this, remove the cover from the control box and while driving at the desired lock or unlock speed, have an assistant push the R button below the display and take note of the number. You can then adjust the lock speed setting by moving the first dip switch up, then pressing the U or D buttons to change the value and then the S button to set it. To adjust the unlock speed, move the first and third dip switches up, then follow the same procedure. To prevent hunting, ensure that there's at least a 5% difference between the lock and unlock speeds that you've set. You can then slide the dip switches back down and replace the controller cover. With any adjustments made, you can then tuck the relay and control boxes behind the carpet in the footwell and reassemble the dash, ensuring that all wiring connectors are reattached to their relevant components. To test the effect of the lockup kit, I've driven and recorded an identical 75 km loop covering a variety of different road types. Most of the driving took place on undulating 80 km an hour rural roads and highways, plus a short section of freeway. There was also a section through built up areas where the lockup kit wasn't active due to lower speeds. Apart from the speedo and taco, you can also see the ultra gauge readings for each loop, showing instant fuel consumption, total litres used, digital RPM and average consumption over the loop. The first loop, which is the gauge cluster on the left, was without the lockup kit active, allowing the transmission to operate as it would from the factory. I then repeated the loop with the lockup kit in automatic mode, which is shown in the right hand side gauge cluster. As you can see, once the lockup kit activates at around 75 km an hour, the revs and fuel consumption are considerably lower in every case, sometimes by as much as 30%, driving at the same speed on the same piece of road. This is because all of the engine's power is being used to propel the vehicle, instead of a portion being lost in the spinning torque converter, which is also generating excess heat in the transmission fluid. By the end of the loop, the lockup kit had delivered an almost 10% improvement in fuel consumption, but the figures only tell half the story. The vehicle is so much better to drive at highway speeds now. It's more responsive, the noise is lower, the taco doesn't rock it up every time you hit a small hill, and the transmission fluid stays cooler. If you spend a lot of time driving on the highway, especially towing, then this transforms the vehicle. It's the way Toyota should have built it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the installation of the torque converter lock into the 200 series. As always, there's more information on the Project 200 website. See you next time.